Hi, it's Andreas. This morning we were talking about a very interesting topic on the coaching sessions. Uh, we were talking about uh, schema design on DynamoDB. So I think that would be interesting for you and I want to show you basically uh, how to do this based on a relational database. Uh, yeah, so have fun with this video. I think that that should help you if you're working with document stores. Yeah, so DynamoDB is basically a document store where you can store JSON documents. So a JSON string you can store as document and then access the data in it. The actual use case that we had was uh, now this. We had a relational database where we created a schema and it's a very simple schema. You have a customer and the customer creates reviews for flights where basically you have a flight with some attributes like the distance and this, where it started and uh, yeah, fl about the flight, some attributes. Then you have the review like leg room and <laughs> like customer service and so on. And then you have the customer with the information about the customer. So we were talking about, okay, how would you build this in a very simple relational schema? You would say you create one table, a customer table, where the primary key is a customer ID. You have the review where you have then the review ID is the primary key and you put the customer key as the foreign key. And then you create a flight table with the flight information. And basically you would bring this all together into the review table where you can then query the data. So the idea is you query the data that the, the customer logs into the user interface and then sees the flights and the reviews uh, for the flights. So what has happened here, or how would you query this? You would make a join between these tables and then you would actually search the review table um, by um, reviews for the customer. So you would search them by uh, where the customer ID equals the customer's customer ID and where already a review is there. Right, so you would then retrieve this and work with it. And then, if you need more information, you could then query the flight information from this. So now, this uh, this is a very simple use case. Of course, you could build this in a in a relational database. But as you see already, you need a lot of a lot of index indices here. I need to keep track of them. You need to join tables. Uh, is there a way you could do this more simplified? And this is where, for instance, document stores come in, where when, if you say here you have millions of customers and customers create like 10 or, or 10 to 20 reviews, what could you do to make this a bit simpler um, or easier to access? Because you're, as I said, the access is, all, is coming through the customer and then the reviews. So when you look at a... At a uh, document store like MongoDB or like uh, DynamoDB on AWS, uh, the data is stored in items. And basically, what you could, what we could do here is we could create an item. Item is, as I said, is a, is a JSON string. And uh, yeah, you could then add here your information to the to the data. Uh, now, th as I said, this is this is how it looks. And if you think about this information would come more or less basically through an API where you already would work with JSON data, why not just simply use the JSON data and, and store it as it is? So how would you design this? That's always the question. How would you design this in a way that is uh, from a performance standpoint very good, but it's also is writing performance and read performance is the right read performance. And we were talking about, and actually I, at first, I, I made a mistake, and that's why I, after the session, I've been thinking a bit more about this. Um, I basically I see three options that you can do here. The option one is what I what I um, what I suggested is basically in in uh, DynamoDB you can also have ind indices, you uh, can have a primary ind index and then a sort key, and basically that's that's what we see here. That would be the primary index here. And this will be the sort key. The idea is the sort key you need 
because if you write something to the primary key multiple times, it will overwrite it. So without creating a sort key, it would actually overwrite this thing. So one option would be you could create, uh, I basically have three options here. The first option would be a very simple thing. You create a primary key for the customer ID and then you into the item you write the actual under the attribute so basically this is this is uh, this is an attribute here you could so as you see you can also write nested stuff so you could say okay let's um, let's write a row and each customer gets a row and here in the attribute I'm storing the actual flight ID and I'm storing the attribute value from the flight and from the review basically so you're, you're storing here uh, multiple things into, yeah, into the data. So you store the attribute value from, from the JSONs here. And then just add columns based on how many reviews the customer does. This is for white column stores. Very often you can do stuff like that. In case of document stores, the problem is, and I've been looking into this after the stream, and I always forget this, I, I should know this, um, a item is um, limited on the size. So an item can only be 400 kilobytes, which would be a problem because if you build that, uh, if you do it like option one here, you would actually, the item size would increase and increase and increase and then at some point it would be done. Like that's it, no more, no, nothing happens. Like that's it, item is too big, cannot go any further. So I, option one, basically is bad uh, uh, too big too large item size then you had another uh, would have another option would you, that you say okay then let's do it like option two here um, let's create it in a way that you store a row for each of the reviews so the customer, you use the customer ID as the private key, uh, as the primary key, and you create a sort key as the flight ID. And within this combination, you store the review and you store the flight data. So this would mean that uh, when you query it, the customer goes to the to the home page. Uh, what the system would do, it would it would basically get all the rows for the customer, and then you would would you visualize them so the in green again are all the attributes here so you would have one attribute which would be a column where the all the review json data is in it and flight data where all the the flight information is in so this would be would be possible uh, you could also uh, this thing of course has one negative side and that's always the thing with these NoSQL databases now when you look at this um, this is very easy to actually query from a standpoint that you come from the customer right if you now want to find reviews for a flight this will be super terrible like you, you where where can you have that you only have the the primary key um of the customer id so that it's terrible you would need to do a full table scan more or less and search for that so this is eh. another thing is of course the flight data will get duplicated here so for every customer if 100 customers are riding on that on that plane um or taking the flight you will have 100 times here the flight data which could be could be bad but also who cares? Like right now, the the data size uh, can be big, so I I would might might not be interesting. You could also say, okay, I'm going to create a, a this is only the ID, and I create another table with the flight data, and then you link these two tables together. Basically, you query then the flight data, which is also possible. But it would be nice to have everything in one basically in one row. Now, another option would be that you say, okay, let's do it differently let's say we're creating the primary key is the customer id so still when customer goes on the user interface selects the customer it's a, it ha he has the customer id the, the customer and uh, then 
all the rows or the rows can be queried based on that and based on the timestamp assorted. So you have the timestamp in, so you could say, okay, let's give me just between uh, or every flight data for 2021. All right. Um, so it would retrieve you all the basically all the rows for that. And uh, yeah, you could work with it, or you could say, well, I'm uh, in a first step. I'm not really interested in all the in the review data and the flight data. Let's just I just want to know how many flights are there, and or basically I want to know I want to have all the rows, but only with the timestamp and the flight ID, so I can sort that um, on the user interface. And then later you could retrieve the data for the flight when the customer goes into the actual flight. And, and writes a review or, or um, reads a review. So this is um, this is a way you would have the primary key and the sort key, the timestamp. This way you could uh, the data would also be sorted. So the system could just retrieve it uh, in series. And then with a secondary key, you could say, okay, now I want to retrieve all the reviews based on the flight ID. So this would be the other way that you say, okay, I'm not looking from a customer's uh, perspective, but I'm looking more for a um, for a airline from an airline perspective. I want to read all the reviews based on this flight ID. And then then it would be possible with the secondary key, secondary index. The problem is with that, uh, usually now you have to write one more. This will be a bit more interesting. Um, it will take a bit more data. It will cost, I think, a bit more on AWS. I'm not 100% sure, but that's that's the main that's the idea here. So you have to think about okay, how do I how do I order this? How do I uh, how do I query the data? Which is the, why, why it's so super important. Um, usually within with these databases, you have. Um, you have two things you need to look into. You have write performance and read performance. And this is always like a, uh, yeah, a, a trade-off. Sometimes when the write performance is very, very good, very often the read performance is bad. If the read perform if the write performance isn't that good, the read is very good, is very quick. So it's always like uh, and, and and you have to outweigh this because let's say um you Design this differently. You could you could um, you could write physically. The data will be stored on on servers somewhere and into into regions, let's say. And you can get some hotspotting, what it's called, if you write to the same region to the same thing all the time. So if the customer ID, if, the, if there would be something like flight reviews with a with hundred million or no, no, airline reviews, where a lot of data is coming in for the same airline, then um, you would get some hotspotting because it would always write to the same to the same region within your database. I hope that is clear. I could, uh, but let me know if if you if you need some more information about hotspotting. I can I can prepare something. But generally, these are the options. That's what you can do. Um, I would go for either option two or option three. Again, you could say, okay, let's build another table here for the flight data. So this um, this could also have uh, or or just the flight ID. Oh, the flight ID we already have here. So you could say you're you even drop you're even dropping this one here instead of a uh, instead of a, instead of a different table with the flight data, right? And as I said, the cool thing is that this way the database is very very simple you don't need to do joints you just you go in there you select it say okay give me everything from the customer send me give me only the customer id and the flight ids or give me only the customer id and the timestamp and then you will get a list and then you can go from there without needing to worry about uh about here designing or here making joints and so on it's everything is in there and sometimes it's cool to have basically everything in there to to make a row and in that row is all the data you need everything and that is that is really really cool and that's where these where these document stores are coming in very often for white column stores that's another thing is where you can just like Cassandra where you can just create a million a million columns and push this thing out and this would be something where you can actually you could actually store all the 
all the reviews like here in an option one where you could store all the reviews into a single row so yeah it's really cool the other thing is again uh, also what i didn't mention is you're completely free of what is in that what is in that review here or in that flight data so it's uh you you could write here whatever you want the attributes here are completely free you don't need to do a schema design before you uh, before you set this up just write the data in i work with it yeah so i hope that helped you i hope that uh, will give you some information about uh, document stores how to handle them a bit about schema design i think uh, for my student we're going to go as that either with option here with option two or option three because i think for our use case it doesn't really matter if we store the flight data multiple times it's just for learning okay so uh, i hope you learned something i hope you had fun um, let me know what you think and then see you in the next video i'm going to do this more often now to share my experience share some stuff that i work with, work on so see you next time bye bye